when we're born into this world, we come crashing in without any guarantees that it's going to be a safe place to land. We're fortunate if we get good parents to look after us. A good birth. In other words, what the Buddha calls coming in brightness. But that's not always the case. But how we come is not the issue. As he said, there are four kinds of people in the world. Those who come in brightness and go in brightness. Those who come in brightness and go in darkness. Those who come in darkness and go in brightness. And those who come in darkness and go in darkness. Coming in brightness means you're born into good conditions. You have an opportunity for education, you have an opportunity to set yourself up in life without too many difficulties. Coming in darkness means you don't have those opportunities. Going in brightness means you follow the precepts, you practice the Dharma, you're headed in a good direction. Going in darkness means you don't follow the precepts, you don't practice the Dharma, you're headed down. So regardless of how we come, we have to look at where we're going. But all too many people in the world come into the world, and even if you come in brightness, there's going to be suffering. And all they can think about is how to get away. So they go running in whatever direction seems to get away from the suffering. And for the most part, they go running towards sensual pleasures. But then the sensual pleasures don't last, and often they turn into suffering. They have to, have to run away again. And John Cha gives the analogy of a snake. One end of the snake has teeth, the other end of the snake doesn't have teeth. We look at the end that has teeth and we say, no, I don't want to, I don't want to touch that. It's obviously dangerous. We don't see any teeth on the other end and we think it's safe. Of course, the other end is connected to the end that has teeth. And so we keep running back into suffering and trying to run away and finding more sensual pleasures. The Buddha offers an alternative, what he calls his middle way. We chanted about it just now. Now the middle way is not middling. In other words, you're not going to be trying to catch the snake right in the middle. You're going to stay away from the snake. You're looking for something better, a way out. And the heart of the way out is right concentration, because it offers a pleasure that is not sensual, a pleasure of form. So you aim here. This is one of the meanings of what the Buddha calls having yourself well aimed, having yourself well directed. You aim at a pleasure that's harmless and blameless. Harmless in that it doesn't intoxicate the mind. Blameless in that you don't create any bad karma. Nobody gets harmed by your pursuit of pleasure inside. So you put aside thoughts of sensuality and focus simply on the sensation of the body as you feel it right now. Notice how the breath feels as it comes in and goes out. Notice what kind of breathing feels good. This is called using directed thought and evaluation. You direct your thoughts to the breath and then you evaluate the breath. Is it a good breath to settle down with? Experiment for a bit to see what varieties of breathing there are and how different ones feel in the body right now. Choose one that seems to feel best. And as long as it feels good, stick with it. And as I say, no animals are being harmed as you do, as you do this. No beings are being harmed at all. That you find you can feed off of this pleasure. It gives you sustenance. It's not the whole path, but it's what the Buddha calls the heart of the path. The other elements of the path are its requisites, its supports.
but work on this. Because this takes you out of that back and forth. And it gives you a real direction. Otherwise, as we run into suffering in life, we fall into what the Buddha says are the two reactions to suffering. One is bewilderment. Where does this come from? Why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? And then a search. Is there somebody out there who knows a way to put an end to the suffering? There are a lot of people out there who would give you advice. Not very good advice. We're fortunate that we found the Buddhist teachings. We found a person of integrity who knows the way out, and it's a harmless way, and it's an effective way. This is the beginning of getting a good direction, finding somebody who knows the right direction. Then you listen to their dharma. And you know that it's the true dharma because when you try to put it into practice, you get results. You put it into practice first by applying appropriate attention, saying, how does this teaching apply to my problem of suffering right now? How do I identify where my suffering is, what I'm doing to cause it, and how does this teaching give me some insights into how I can develop a path that brings that suffering to an end? By bringing the cause to an end. You listen and you see how it applies. And then you practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma, not by inventing Dharma as you would like it to be, not by making things up. We see all too much of this all around us. Of course, when you don't follow the Dharma as it is, in other words, you try to adjust the Dharma to suit your defilements, it just takes you back to where you were before. It doesn't lead you out. To be led out of where you are, you have to be willing to put aside, put aside a lot of your preconceived notions, a lot of your firmly held beliefs, the beliefs that have gotten you into trouble so far. and give the Dharma a real try. That's when your life takes direction. In other words, it takes the direction out. You're not living just for the sake of the body. You're not living just for the sake of sensual pleasures. There's something better. But we don't get to that something better unless we're willing to make sacrifices. all the way to the end. I think I've told you that story of the, the woman who transcribed a lot of Ajahn Mahabhu's Dharma talks. A friend of hers was dying of cancer and wanted to go to stay with Ajahn Mahabhu for a while and practice the Dharma so she could get herself ready for her death and for dealing with the pain of the disease leading up to the death. He said, well, I can take care of your mind, but I can't take care of your body. You've got to find a doctor to come along with you. So this woman, who was a retired doctor in her 80s, went along. The Jamahabu gave almost 90 Dharma talks in the course of the three months that they were there. And then we got back. After several months, the, the woman with cancer died. And the woman in her 80s decided they had all these tapes of the Dharma talks he'd given to them. It'd be good to transcribe them. But she felt a little bit daunted by the challenge. Here she was 80, her eyesight was not all that good, she wasn't as strong as she used to be. But John Mahabhava said to her, see how much goodness you can still squeeze out of your body. You're going to have to throw it away at some point anyhow. So squeeze as much goodness as you can while you've got the opportunity. Now you can do that when you have a firm sense of direction. All too many people live life without any sense of direction. They just want to run away from suffering without any really clear idea of where they're running to. And 
one of the standard phrases in the canon of someone who's upset by events, who's been knocked for a loop by events, is that the directions are all dark. Otherwise it's hard to see what's, what's north, what's south, what's east, what's west. And that's the confusion most people live in. But if we take the Dharma as our guide, we have a very clear sense of direction. Just make sure that you practice the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma, and it'll take you to a good place. So that regardless of how you came into the world, you leave the world in brightness.